and um, hopefully we'll get a few more people uh, as this goes on. This is a really important session today on um, LinkedIn and some new platforms we can think about also on uh, some tools that we can use to be more efficient with our social media. So uh, for those who are here, you'll certainly benefit from today's session and we hope others will join. Uh, just before we hand over to Millie for the content of today, um, we wanted to check in on how things are going with your groups and uh, just to get a sense that you've been able to have meetings either inside or outside uh, of this space and that things are going well with your planning for the joint campaigns that are going to be presented on Tuesday. So you may not have all your group members in the team, but I'm gonna call out uh, group by group. And if there's any member of that team that is present with us today, if you could just put your hand up and I'll ask you just to give a quick sense of how things are going with your group. I'm gonna start with the LGBTIQA group that has Capricorn, Master of Healing, Standout Youth, Eagle Youth. Uh, anyone here from the LGBTIQ group? Present. Okay, Lebo, oh, great. Lebo, everything's going well with your group? All good? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay, all right, no, no problems. All right, let's move on to the menstrual health group. Uh, young women for, with dignity, Rike, Youth Aspire, Emma Swatini, anyone here from the menstrual health group? Anyone here? If you if you are, can you speak? Up? Can you just identify yourselves? I don't think I've seen them. Okay. Do you know anything about that group, Namsi? Uh, no, no, you were in that group at some point. No, sorry. No, no, no. So, so let's say, is everything going fine with your group? Is she, is she in that group? No. No, I'm not sure. Okay. Anyone here from the menstrual health group? Uh, Namti, do you know anything about that group? Have they formed a WhatsApp group? Have they been meeting? Okay, let me just check who's the facilitator for that group so that I can be sure. If it's Ntolo's group, they have been meeting. Yeah, it is Ntolo's so group. No, no, sorry, sorry. Ntolo's the SRHR advocacy. Is it Juliet? I, I, I don't have my notes in front of me. Yeah, I think it's probably Juliet. Let me just it's check. Juliet. Yeah, if it's Juliet's group, I know they've been meeting. They have been meeting. Okay, good. Yeah. ASRHR advocacy, that is in Tolo's group. That's the uh, AG, YW, Lesotho, Lesotho Young uh, Christian Women's Association, Youth in Community Zimbabwe, Youth Action Health in Myanmar. The advocacy, ASRHR. Is anyone here from that group? Yeah, ah, there we are, in Myanmar. Um, Balentle and Edna, awesome. Every, your group is going fine, all is good. Karabo is here as well. Mm -hmm. Can one of you speak up? But your network is not good. Maybe, Bali, your network is not good. Maybe uh, let's let Karabo speak to it. Uh, we have been. We have been meeting. Yes, we have been um um trying to talk. We okay. are communicating on the WhatsApp. Okay, very good. Good to hear that. All right, then we have the comprehensive um, sexual education. Uh, ASR, the other ASRH group. Okay. The other ASRHR groups, Wankefa, uh, Mans uh, Mansopa, the group from Madagascar, Project One Leader. Yeah, I'm, I believe you have been for Lele, yes. Like yes, we discuss? have been meeting. Yeah, I've um, been seeing lots of substance. Mm -hmm. Just in the sharing process, um, we just delegated people um, to some responsibilities. So we get to meet and see if um, how that goes, so yeah. Okay, yeah, that's great. If you're in the phase now of delegating responsibilities, 
graphic design and so on and so on. Um, you know, that is awesome. So well done. Um, yeah, and was there now a separate group on early pregnancy or did they join? Black women arise, sorry, they're all in the same group, yeah. They're all still in that same group, the one that uh, Polita has just spoken to. Great, um, then we have the safe abortion group, uh, Salama, Women's Action Group, Shihive, Bristol Ketswe, Malawi Human Rights Resource Center, and Coalition for Human Rights Defenders of Tanzania. Any, anyone from the safe abortion group? Yeah, could you put your hands up? Uh, yes, I'm um, here. Okay. Yes, we have, a, we have a WhatsApp group. We Good. are having a meeting on Monday. Most people uh, were available for a Monday meeting. So, okay. yeah, that's the group. Yes. Very good. All right. Happy to hear that safe abortion is very important for our partnership. So we're really looking forward to hearing from you. Then we have a large GBV group, Nomti, your group, uh, Ijefa from RDC, Southwestern Region, Pola, Ruth Sinema, Lifesavers, Quanella, Let Us Grow, Unlimited, Unlimited Hope Alliance Trust. The GBV group, not to be like yes, that. Uh, my group has been communicating via WhatsApp. Um, they haven't yet set up a Zoom meeting, but I think we will set one up for Monday. Okay, Monday's cutting it fine, guys. You'll have a lot to do. <laughs> I would encourage you to, you know, at least by the time you get to Monday, be clear about your messaging and so on, yeah? Because uh, remember yeah. the presentations are on Tuesday and the presentation, we can't extend that deadline, as you know, because, you know, the training can't go on and on. Tuesday is it, yeah? So if you haven't yet started uh, actual content, uh, you may want to start thinking about that before the weekend, yeah? And then we have the um, sex workers um, uh, coalition uh, that have already formed themselves into a joint initiative, Susonke and Boof. Um, Susonke, anyone here from Susonke and Boof? Um, yes. Uh, hi, hi, everyone. Vov is here. Okay. You and Susonke have been meeting around your campaign? Yes, we have. We had even had a discussion yesterday after work about everything else. Perfect. All right. Great to hear that. Thank you. Welcome, Chantal. Uh, lovely to have you here today. Uh, looking forward to the case study that you're going to be presenting on your use of LinkedIn. Uh, Millie, just to say Chantal is here now. And um, Nomti, if you can link Chantel up with the menstrual health group with Juliet, yeah, so that she can be added to the WhatsApp and okay, she'll be sure. for that campaign, yeah. Okay, so sure. just a re quick recap, friends, while I have this moment around the joint campaigns. You all have a skeletal, um, you know, PowerPoint. Uh, I say skeletal because honestly, what we're looking for is how you are going to with all your imagination and creativity and everything that you've learned this week, how you are just gonna bring that to life for us uh, in your presentations on Tuesday, make it your own, add things if you want to. There's so much we've learned here, so much more than what you have in it. It's skeleton, skeletal, just say these are the minimum things we'll be expecting in the presentation of your joint campaigns on Tuesday, but please feel free to make it your own. Don't be bound by it. Uh, make it look good, make it zappy. This is communications. Yeah, wow us with these joint campaigns. So what are some of the things that we'll be looking for uh, in those presentations on Tuesday? Just to recap, we will be looking at how you are working across borders. The issues that we are dealing with are not specific. They are common to all of our countries in the SADC region. This is a SADC program. We have eight countries represented. We made sure that in each of your groups, there are at least two countries, uh, usually three, sometimes even more than that. So we are looking for learning and sharing across borders. In your groups, you would want at least to get to know what each of you is doing, yeah? Because we want to see the, 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 um, the, 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 the 
the authenticity yeah, of the work that all of you do on the ground uh, coming through. So working across borders is, is, is a key part of this. And the reason why we have formed these groups virtually and so on, again, as part of the training to say, we have these wonderful tools now called technology, even if we haven't met in person and hopefully we will, um, you know, in the course of this grant, uh, we can start to reach out using the technology that's available to us and strengthen each other's efforts. The issues around safe abortion, for example, are common no matter where you are, but each of our countries is at a slightly different stage as far as that issue is concerned. So we can learn and share, and with governments, we can name and shame. I want to point you again to those resources in the barometer. Make your campaigns factually based uh, in the help desk for each of your theme areas. We've pointed you to a barometer chapter, it's very recent. It starts with key facts, you know. Use those key facts uh, in your messaging. Use them to amplify uh, your campaign. Um, as Millie has been pointing out, we really want to understand the before, the during, and the after. How, you know, how are we planning for this before? Uh, how are we going to run the actual campaign? And then how are we going to measure the success? You've had so much information during this week on analytics, yeah? How are we going to use these analytical tools? Clearly, we'll be looking to how you use social media to amplify uh, your voice, but it may well be that you have actions planned through this grant on the ground. It's always great to see how actions on the ground are then linked up uh, through these platforms uh, that we have. We'd like to ask you to use at least one of the key dates that we have put, uh, you know, in that calendar that we sent. Use at least one of the key dates to have a virtual dialogue that will bring together a panel that will bring together all of us and indeed anyone else because we will advertise those very widely. So for example, if you're doing ASRHR, you might pick the 16th of June or you might pick the 12th of August, which is International Youth Day. 16th of June is Day of the African Child. You know, just one of those days say, on this particular day, we're gonna to come together. We're gonna to have this powerful panel consisting of this one, that one. This will be the main theme. These are the issues that we're going to amplify because at the end of this training, we would like to walk away with a calendar of about six to eight uh, dates where we're going to have these dialogues that you will be anchoring and hosting and whose content you will decide and whose panelists you will decide. Remember also Millie has been carrying on about influencers. Who are some of the influencers that we can bring to those dialogues or how can we connect with them through social media? So that they amplify um, you know, our messages. So please make sure that at least one of those key dates uh, has been made use of. Um, so uh, we um, uh, just around the logistics, uh, Tenji, lovely to hear from you that you have been working via WhatsApp. Uh, Monday meeting will be the finalization. Great, thank you for that assurance. Um, all of us went straight to WhatsApp, uh, what an amazing tool, yeah, to form these groups because we can begin to brainstorm and chat uh, on those WhatsApp groups and we're using them so that when we get to Monday, we're just finalizing. So whether you've been on a WhatsApp group or Zoom or a Google Hangout or whatever, the point is you have been connecting and thinking and brainstorming uh, and Monday will be the day to wrap it up. So just again, just a reminder, I know Nomti announced this yesterday, but I'm going to just um, uh, emphasize that at the end of the day today, Millie, when we break at 3.30, Nomti will put the breakout rooms there again so that if you would like the space today uh, between 3.30 and 4 just to connect uh, on this platform, uh, you can pop into the breakout rooms and do that. But if you're already connecting via WhatsApp or some other means and have another plan you've made, that's totally fine, it's just an open space. However, on Monday, we have the full time of this um, training, i.e. from uh, one o'clock to 3.30. Uh, the the uh, platform will be open, the breakout groups will be there. The only thing we will do on Monday is group work. So you definitely have a, a space there on Monday uh, to quote Tenji, where you can just bring it all together. So that space will be there, and I would encourage all of you to make use of it, because I believe by Monday, you'll be having your draft PowerPoints and so on. You can start to um, uh, to, to sort of uh, uh, um, uh, do dry runs of what your presentation will look like and so on. 
because on Tuesday we have a, a panel of experts uh, who will be listening very carefully when you present. You'll all have 10 minutes. Uh, another key skill in communication is how to say what you have to say uh, succinctly, briefly, convincingly, um, with lots of visuals and graphics and so on, so you don't have to say much. Uh, the, the PowerPoints can speak for themselves. You, the panel will be listening carefully, they will be assessing, and as we said at the end, one of the teams will, uh, will be a, a winner, and the winners will get to go to the um, Women Deliver Conference in Kigali, which is a very nice incentive for you, I hope, uh, to, look to, to work towards. Um, having said that, uh, just remember that all of us are winners in this process. We are learning, we are stretching ourselves, we are connecting. That is the most important thing. And through that connection, hopefully we are forming uh, long lasting uh, relationships that um, you know, will see us working together in a much more active way in this, um, uh, in this partnership. So thank you so much again. I see our numbers have gone up as I've been babbling away, <laughs> Millie. So uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna hand over to you now for today's contents. Cool, thank you, Colleen. We are officially on day five. Well done to everyone for like, I know it's not the end, but you've literally like been such troopers the whole time and you've been so engaged. Um, we're about to start kick off day five, but we're going to kick off with the Kahoot. I think Nadia is already here and ready to start today's Kahoot. You know the drill, go onto the Kahoot website and input the pin, and then we will start with our Kahoot, then day five proceedings will go through. Can you give us a music, Nadia? Thank you. I as in. Oh, please share the link. Okay. I'll share the link short. The link doesn't work, just scan the QR code using your phone. Let's get 20 people in and maybe we can start.
Say my tembu, yo yo, cherry, here, Mel. I love today's um, nicknames. Friday, Oiti. One more person, then we can start. Okay, Nadia, we have 20 people in. I think we can kick off. At day five of Gender Link Social Media Training, let's go. It's all about LinkedIn today. What is the capital of Canada? It has nothing to do with LinkedIn, but this is a quiz. <laughs> And then 12 people got it right, eight got it wrong. It is Ottawa. Let's see the scoreboard. Tweeny at number one, Frye number two, Yo Yo, Aya at number four, at number five. Next question, please. Multiple choice question What is the capital city of Brazil? And it is Brasilia. I know everyone says Rio de Janeiro, but it is Brasilia. Let's see the scoreboard. Posh on number one. Yo-Yo up to number five, Karen. Welcome to the top five, Friday and Trini. Let's see the next question. What kind of food is penne? And of course, it is pasta, easy peasy. Scoreboard, Friday back at number one. Scoreboard remains unchanged. Let's go to the next question. Who's the current president of France? No Googling, guys. No Googling. And it is Emmanuel Macron. 15 people get that right. Let's check out the scoreboard. We still have Fry at the top, number four's back in the top five. Scoreboard remains unchanged. Let's go to the next question. Number six of 10. On average, how far away is the moon from the earth in kilometers? Is it 384, 400 kilometers? Or 200 or 220 or 350. It is a whole 384,400 kilometers away. Let's see who got it right. 
nine people got it right. Scoreboard, posh, miracle at number two, remains a bit unchanged. Welcome to the top five miracle. Let's go to question seven of 10. Which of these is not a color in the Olympic film? Mm -hmm. And the answer is purple. There is no purple in the Olympics ring. Let's check out the scoreboard. Miracle at number one, number four at number two, Trini, Karen, and Posh. And five players have been answering correctly for the last um, seven questions. Eight of 10. What is the tallest mountain in the world? it is Mount Evans. 14 of you got that right. Let's check out the scoreboard. Miracle still at number one. Scoreboard remains highly unchanged. Kali has the highest answer streaks with five correct answers. Nine of ten. Taking it home now. How many keys are there on a piano? And the correct answer is 88. I bet I also thought it was 45. Let's check out the scoreboard. Miracle is taking it today. Number four, Karen, killing it, all making a very good comeback, and Posh and Kali. Okay, and for the last question of the Kahoot quiz. Who is next in line to the British throne after King Charles? And you're right, it is Prince William. Let's see who won today's Kahoot. And the winners are, drum roll, coming to the podium at number three, Posh. Well done, Posh. Karen at number two. And the winner of today's Kahoot is Miracle. Well done. Congratulations, Miracle and Lebu at number four are the runners up. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Lebu. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got so excited by that. Cool, guys. Thank you so much. It's been so fun <laughs> going through the cahoots with you. Like I said in previous trainings, if your bandwidth permits you, please do put your cameras on. I'd love to see you as I'm presenting because it's way more fun presenting to people you can see than a dead screen. So today we are on day five of the Social Media Summit, and we are going to be talking about LinkedIn and social media tools that you can use. Um, I don't think there'll be anything new with regards to the social media tools because we have been talking about them every day from Monday until now. So this is just an overview of what we're going to go through today. 
Um, we're going to go through an overview of LinkedIn as a platform. We're going to go through what's trending on LinkedIn. Um, every platform has got its own trends. And the reason why we have actually delved into each platform specifically is to ensure that we actually show you and tell you what trends you can look forward to and what trends you can tap into on the different platforms. We are going to go through the do's and don'ts of these platforms so that you are not on LinkedIn behaving like you're on Twitter or on Twitter behaving like you're on LinkedIn. We are going to go through some organizations that are doing well on LinkedIn, as well as organizations that aren't doing so well on LinkedIn. And we'll actually go through also the ultimate guide to fundraising on LinkedIn. We are going to look at some tools of fundraising on LinkedIn. And then we are going to look at some social media management tools and a very short exercise. Cool. So to kick off, is LinkedIn just a recruitment platform? I think when LinkedIn first came through into the game, it was all about recruitment and, you know, looking for the next teacher or the next CEO or the next CMO to join my company. And that is what LinkedIn was, was specifically used for. But over the years, um, LinkedIn has actually upped the game a lot and actually just like looked at their platform and made a lot of tweaks just to actually be up to up to date and abreast with other social media platforms and they've moved away from being just a recruitment platform to being a very big platform and um, that is a contender to Facebook and Twitter and to Instagram and as well as other platforms I call LinkedIn the sleeping giant because there is no platform in all the platforms that we have mentioned this week where you have a sophisticated network of people. You have CEOs, you have meet, you have got MDs, you have got COOs, you have students, you've got graduates, all on that platform. And these people actually come onto the platform to, you know, for professional gain and for professional use. And they put their titles on their LinkedIn profiles, which makes our jobs way easy if we need to connect with them or if we need to advertise to them. So while LinkedIn has transformed to being more than just an employment platform, you know, so eight, eight people get hired via LinkedIn every minute. And I think it's important for you guys as NGOs, if you have adverts advert, um, or vacancies in your organizations and you need um, people to come and work in your organizations, do utilize LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn's um, jobs um, search functionality because, because LinkedIn was specifically designed for recruitment back in the day. It is where people still go if they need to recruit somebody or if they need to look for a job. LinkedIn has grown a lot in the last couple of years. Um, and the, the, the bigger age group right now on LinkedIn is between 25 to 34 years, which is really amazing because you know you are talking to a bunch of people that are sophisticated, that is educated, that are on LinkedIn, you know, for real, for real problem solving things and for real issues. And they're not just there to play or to share memes. Um, in 2023, LinkedIn is coming out with a whole lot of more um tools which include video accessibility um, they have a new search functionality um, and they're also going to give us more analytics and obviously they're going to give us um, post scheduling um, back in the day only Facebook um, as a platform allowed you to schedule posts um, on their platform but now LinkedIn is wanting to go into the space and I think it's really great that LinkedIn is tapping into into the post scheduling space so some top trends on LinkedIn um, I found a video, it's not too long, but we'll play this video so that you can just see what are the top five trends on LinkedIn and what, you, what and how can you tap into those trends as an organization. So there's a little video for me um, for you to, to watch. Oh, sorry, my audio is off. Let's get in to the trends. So the first trend that we're going to be talking about in 2023 that you really need to take action on is, of course, video. You're watching a video right now. What's the reason for that? Well, it's the most engaging type of content there is on the interwebs. Okay, it gets people engaged. If you can engage someone, provide them value, really bring them into your world and let them feel like they know who you are, you're instantly able to build rapport. Some of you that have watched a lot of my content will feel as if you know me that we know each other. There's a relationship being built. You know that I'm not this complete stranger. And if you reached out to me on LinkedIn, you'd feel like, you know what? I feel like I already know this person. I'm quite happy to speak to them. Well, that is the power of video on LinkedIn. If you're just starting out on the platform, get people to know who you are by 
posting as much video content as you can. That type of content can be found very easily if you're thinking, well, what content do I post? What do I talk about on my videos? I don't feel good in front of a camera. Well, firstly, if you don't feel confident enough to put yourself on camera in the first place, I have a free ebook in the description below, which will completely eradicate any fears that you have and you will want to be creating videos after you've read that. So who can check that out? It's completely free. But the main thing here is you utilize this incredibly powerful source and medium that we have at our disposal to put yourself out there to share value, okay? Content types could be anything from answering frequently asked questions to giving value around pain points that, that your target audience might be experiencing to introducing yourself on the platform. People want to get to know who you are. So just put out content. Video is absolutely going to dominate the floor in LinkedIn. That is the biggest trend. Number one, biggest one. Let's not hold it till the end. Yeah, on video. Number two, and these are still popping off on LinkedIn, is carousels. So you know those content pieces that are images that you can just scroll through? Most people use those very effectively, and they are great for taking customers down a journey, providing them value. And then when they reach your call to action at the end, they take action. Far more effective than a standard post with just an image or a standard post with just written text. The best way to go about carousels is to get yourself on Canva. Again, links in the description. I've got a Canva link that will just take you there and you can do all the stuff that you need to do. Um, and basically, go on Canva and create the images. So the first image needs to be your hook. That's just like the first sentence of a post to create a really strong hook to get people in. Usually, if you have a particular niche, a particular target audience, you want to address a pain point. So let's say for example, the five biggest trends on LinkedIn in 2023, there's a great hook, hey, eh? that are going to get people to go, oh, I want to know what those are. And then they scroll. Number one, here's your thing. Number two, da da da. Number three, da da da. And by the time they get to the end, hey, if you want training on this, follow this link or contact me here. There's your call to action. People take action because they've gone through the journey with you. So if you haven't already, do utilize carousels as well. You that are, are going to be valuable potential leads in the future. Appreciate it and it means an awful lot. Anyway, let's get in. Okay. The video is long. It's about eight minutes long, but you guys are going to get all my presentations in the help desk. So you'll be able to watch the video in your own time at leisure. Um, the other trend that's coming on LinkedIn this year is the introduction of LinkedIn stories. Um, we have been talking about stories from on all the other platforms. Twitter at the moment is the only platform that doesn't have stories. Facebook has stories. Instagram has stories. TikTok has stories. And now LinkedIn wants to play around with stories because stories, they increase for traffic of businesses. And because they do that, they want to see if they can do, they can roll stories across um, LinkedIn so that we can see if organizations and brands and people can actually tap into the power of stories. And stories, like I said in my previous training they are nice and short form content they are rememberable and you know you the, the algorithm rewards you for sharing stories so if you share stories on your pages um the algorithm will reward you and by reward i mean that when people are searching for ngo or, or, or using any of the themes um, that we are going to talk about today they are going to see you first because we are using your stories the other big thing that LinkedIn is going to be doing this year is going to be video call and video call conferencing. Um, for, for the moment, LinkedIn has just been doing um, lives, like in the form of Facebook lives, but now you can actually run your meetings on LinkedIn. And I really think that this is a game changer because LinkedIn, like I said, is a platform that has very sophisticated people, business people, CEOs, CMOs, everyone that you want to connect with is on LinkedIn. And the fact that you can have a video call with somebody on LinkedIn is such a game changer. Um, social media on its own has exposed us to people that we were never necessarily going to meet. Um, and because uh, you, you're not going to have to talk to them via email. LinkedIn is making it simple for you. Let's say you are meeting someone who's, you know, who's, who's a potential donor and you're connecting on LinkedIn and you can quickly pop on LinkedIn and have a quick um, video call with them, talk to them about your organization, and they can see you on the same platform without actually having to go through hoops of going onto email, exchanging email addresses and setting up meetings on, on Zoom or, or Google. So I think this is going to be such a game changer and something that organizations like yours can tap into. 
um, LinkedIn this year is going to pay more attention to mental health. Um, you know, social media, as 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 it, as it is, has been linked to negative effects of mental health. You know, as a result, so many people um, sometimes even leaving social media because it's so negative. So, excuse me, LinkedIn has going to have a big focus this year on on promoting positive mental health. They're going to be giving you resources, you know, for people that are struggling with mental health. And I think this is great for content creators and content creators even outside of influencers, um, even content creators like yourselves. You can create content that is around mental health and positive well-being, and you tag, you use the relevant tags on that content. It will be it will be shared by LinkedIn, and it will show up when people are searching for this kind of content. So if you are in the mental health space um, and you want to know how you can set yourself apart from other organizations, I think LinkedIn, with this new with this new um, effort to towards mental health, they're actually going to do your brand a whole lot of good. And how do you get the best out of LinkedIn? So I, I included this because some people are already on LinkedIn while some are starting out on LinkedIn and they really don't know how to get the best out of their platforms and where to go and how to make them better. So how do you get the best out of LinkedIn using your profile? So first of all, what you want to do on LinkedIn, you ensure you want to ensure that you've got a great profile picture. And by profile picture, I mean, if you're an organization, you want to make sure that your profile picture is the logo of your profile of, of your organization. Or if you are if you are the owner of the organization and want to use your face, then you want to use your face. But having your logo as the profile picture is such a great hook on LinkedIn, because when people do come onto your page, then they'll always remember who who this who this brand was because the logo is is something that is going to remind them of, of who the brand is. You want to write a compelling about section. And this is very important because people want to skim through your page and see who is, who is this organization? What are they about? So by compelling copy, I'm saying, don't just write and say, my name is the Malawi Human Rights Commission and I, I, I look after GBV, human rights and all these issues. You want to write your why. You want to resonate with people so that as people are skimming through your profile, they, they can see your why. And they and, and they can resonate with this. Um, LinkedIn is the best place for thought leadership. I've been mentioning this in my training that if you want to be an expert in a in a topic on a topic, which I think you are, all the organizations here are experts on certain topics. You want to write thought leadership articles and you want to share those on LinkedIn. And consider not sharing um, these articles anywhere else on your pla on your platforms, but share them on LinkedIn so that you can be established as a thought leader on that platform. Um, we spoke about video. Video works very well on LinkedIn. Um, the, the World Bank, if you want to check it out after this, they've got a great profile um, on LinkedIn and, and how video use is driving views and engagement. Um, and if you're on LinkedIn, you want to be professional, but friendly and welcoming. So there's nothing worse than being a, an organization that has a tone that is aloof, a tone that is condescending, a tone that looks down on other people. If people ask you questions, you send them to Google, you don't respond to them. So while you are being professional on LinkedIn, you want to be welcoming and you want to be friendly and you want people to feel like they can come to you with any questions. So it's not a place for hard sales. But with LinkedIn fundraising, you can be clever about your donation campaigns. But if you are a brand and you want to be asking for handouts, then obviously you don't want to do that. But you want to be smart about your fundraising abilities and your fundraising campaigns and use the, the LinkedIn platform tools that are there. And remember to tag. So if you are talking to, if you are, if you are working with a certain organization and you've collaborated with them, you want to tag them and say, thank you at UNICEF or thank you at Sesonke, thank you at, at Sonke Gender Justice, thank you at Guanele for collaborating with us so that people can see that you're not just a brand that speaks about themselves, but you're a brand that collaborates with other brands. So on LinkedIn, you don't want to post more than once a day. Um, you know, two, two to three times a week is great because on LinkedIn, things stay on the timeline way longer than they do on Twitter and on the other platforms. And the more people like and engage um, with your stuff, the more it gets pushed up over the other people that are on the timeline. So for LinkedIn, I always say quality over quantity. So think Think carefully about your strategy on LinkedIn. Think carefully about what you want to post and what you want to focus on and post three great, amazing, solid posts a week on LinkedIn and see how the, how the algorithm is going to reward you for that. 
on LinkedIn, be authentic. And authenticity is something that we've been preaching since Monday. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of AI, there's a lot of fake news, there are a lot of things that are happening whereby people are not sure what is real and what is not. But you need to be authentic on LinkedIn so that your people can trust you and know that you are, you are, you are an expert in your space. And share your expertise. Even in the video that I showed you earlier, you want to share your expertise because everyone has something, everyone in every organization has something that only they know and something that they are an expert in. So you want to post like explainer videos. If you want to post maybe an explainer video infographic of how can you find our organization, what happens when you've been raped, if you if 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 you've been assaulted, these are the steps that you can take. You can use a video to showcase all of those things and maybe like you know, a contacting contacting certain areas. So those are all the things that you can do on LinkedIn video. Um, share others' works. So again, like I said, if you're collaborating with other organizations, do share what other organizations are doing so that it looks like a collaborative effort and it's not just one organization shouting on top of the other. And again, comment on other people's posts and be complimentary. So if an organization that is part of this cohort has done something, you can tag them or repost their, their comment and say, we are so proud of the work that is done by She Hive in Lesotho. They had the Minister European Union coming to their organization, and this can only mean good things for that country. So stuff like that. So you, if, if, if an organization that you are part of or that you are friends with is doing something amazing on, on LinkedIn, you can comment and you can be complimentary about the work that they're doing. And again, consider using LinkedIn Live, but you need to have 150 followers. So if you have 150 followers um, on, and above, then you can do LinkedIn Live. If you don't have 150 followers, then you won't be able to do LinkedIn Live. So LinkedIn Live is also a great way of you um, just taking your message across and making sure that people can talk to you in real time. Um, so we want to talk about tagging, how to get the best out of LinkedIn using tags. So use the relevant tags. So even as you're posting, the smart thing and the nice thing about LinkedIn is that LinkedIn is smart. The, the AI tool on LinkedIn will read your post and it will it will actually um, ask you if you want to use certain tags. Certain tags will come up and they'll be suggested to you. So use those tags because those tags are actually picked up on the basis of what your, or what your, your, what your post is about. And tags, um, using the right tags will help you reach more more people and will help you increase engagement because some people when they come onto LinkedIn they come searching using hashtags and not necessarily organizations so you want to keep it simple you don't want to speak in hashtag so the golden rule is used between three and five hashtags because using too many hashtags can be very overwhelming and it can be very spammy so Number three, tag companies strategically. So you want to tag companies, you want to tag organizations, especially when it adds value to your post. Um, again, this is all to help you increase engagement and attract new followers. And use branded hashtags. We spoke about this on Monday or Tuesday, um, that you, if you use your organization's name and create a hashtag, use your organization's theme or cause and create a hashtag. And these hashtags that you have created yourself are going to help you way more than hashtags that you can jump into because you are able to track those hashtags and hashtags that you own. No one else can like come and like hijack the hashtag um, that you own, as opposed to using a hashtag like Monday Motivation that you don't know who owns it and you cannot track it to see how well it's performing. And these are some of the popular hashtags that I found on LinkedIn um, that pertain to, 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 to nonprofit organizations. So in, 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 in your post, when you're posting, after using your own company hashtag or own organization's hashtag, you can use hashtags like nonprofit, you can use charity, you can use fundraising, philanthropy, volunteer, social good, community, donate, sustainability, and impact. So by using these hashtags in your post, um, you can connect with people who are interested in supporting these causes, and um, it can increase increase your chances of attracting, you know, more volunteers, more donors, and more supporters. And some of the do's and don'ts on LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, I've already mentioned this, if even as a, on a personal level and on a professional level, you want to create a professional and engaging profile. I've often seen so many brands and so many people on LinkedIn where they use images that are not, you know, head and shoulders. They don't use professional images. Um, they even as organizations don't use their logo as the profile picture. And this is just so confusing. So you need to use a professional profile picture. You need to have a detailed description of your organization 
its mission, its goals, and you want to, to have the relevant keywords to help people find your organization easily. You want to share valuable content on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a platform of people that are very busy. They know what they're looking for. They know how to find it. So your content can't be memes and gifs and funny cat cat stories. You want to share content that is compelling, that is valuable, that people can share and that people can reference even when they're doing their research. Um, you want to use visual content such as videos and photos. Those work so well on LinkedIn. Text on LinkedIn works, but not as well as videos and photos. You want to engage with your followers. We've been saying this across all the platforms, and I think this is the golden thread across all the platforms that respond to comments, respond to messages, respond to questions promptly. The golden rule is you respond to someone within the hour. And if you don't respond within the hour, at the end of the close of business that day, you want to have responded to all the queries that have come onto your page. And there's also another powerful tool on LinkedIn called groups. And there are so many groups that you can join. You can search for groups um, for, by themes, by nonprofits, you, and then you will find people that you want to connect with. So join groups because groups also have, sometimes they have webinars um, and you can, you can attend these webinars and get tips and tricks for your brand. So do look for groups that you can attend or even better, create your own group and just see how it will work. So if you are in Swaziland and there's a big um, there's a big topic in Swaziland that you feel like the, the NGOs in Swaziland should be tapping into, you can create a group and you can start um, having conversations on LinkedIn and see if you maybe can have a webinar or a little conference or a little live um, about that certain topic. Uh, and some do's, you uh, some do's as well. You want to showcase impact, so people want to see impact. So use your your experiences and use your causes. There's a section that says what causes are you passionate about. Use those causes section to highlight um, what impact does your organization have. Um, use it to encourage volunteers and beneficiaries to share their own stories um, about 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 certain causes. You want to collaborate with other organizations and partner with other nonprofits who have similar goals and create joint initiatives. So there's so many joint initiatives that you can create. Let's say when during Mandela Day, maybe people want to know where they can, people want to know where they can volunteer. Um, and if you collaborate with other organizations, then they'll see, okay, we can come to this organization. We can help you with this kind of things on Mandela Day. So you don't want to be a standalone organization, but you want it to be an organization that collaborates with others. And then obviously using LinkedIn ads when you have budget, um, consider advertising on LinkedIn ads to promote your business. Um, you promote your content and promote your events to a wider audience. And some don'ts on LinkedIn, you don't want to overpost. I said earlier between three, like you need to post about three solid posts a week. So don't post like three times a day um, and then you go quiet. So you need to stick to a consistent schedule. And I've said this before in my training that when people follow your brand, you are making a uh, you are you're making a promise to them that when they come onto your brand, they are going to be seeing certain certain content and receiving the certain content on certain days. So if you are under posting or over posting, then you are confusing your followers. So your followers should know that on Monday, this is the content that is going to come from gender links. On Tuesday, they are going to talk about this. On Wednesday, they're going to talk about this. You should not confuse your people whereby they come onto your brand and they don't know what's happening. You haven't prompted them. You've started a campaign. You haven't even prompted your followers about what's happening. So you want to stick to a schedule and you want to focus on quality over quantity. LinkedIn is that platform where it needs to be all about quality over quantity. And don't be too self-promotional. So while it's nice to showcase your impact and success, but avoid having me, 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 me syndrome. I'm so amazing. I'm doing such great work. I'm changing lives. I'm doing this. It just tends to be a bit disingenuous to people and people can see right through that kind of stuff. So don't be too self-promotional. You know, just be, be authentic and be real. And don't ignore messages and comments. And I think if there's one thing I want you guys to take home um, from this training is that they even as no matter how negative a comment is, you don't ignore it, you do not delete it. And there's nothing that is that damaging on social media that it is going to be spoken about for years to come. So if you do get a negative comment, acknowledge the negative comment, ask for the person's details, move the conversation away from the social media platform into an email, into a phone call, into a let's meet and discuss what your issues are. But you don't want to be getting into a conversation where you are trying to sort out negative comments online 
because people are trolls. And sometimes when they, they are trolling you and they're not really asking questions, but they want to fight and they want to gain more followers. So you want to look at every message that you get, whether negative or positive, acknowledge it, move it out of the social media platform and then get help. Um, and, and then either make a phone call to someone, send them an email, ask to see them, ask them to see you. And then, you know, a good old phone call, it will, will always go a long way with this kind of things. Sorry. And other don'ts, uh, 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 stop, share, stop, share, stop, share, stop, share. Sorry, they back again. Okay. Share screen. and other don'ts on LinkedIn. So you don't want to use a personal profile instead of a company page. There's a difference between a company page and a personal profile. And because sometimes people don't know how these platforms work, I've often seen um, individuals using company pages to talk about their, their, their organizations or doing it vice versa. So create a personal page. If you as a person is Milo Sassi Trailer, have your own personal page as Milo Sassi Trailer. But if your organization is the Milo Sassi Trailer Foundation, then have a separate profile for the Milo Sassi Trailer Foundation. However, if you want, you can you can try and get um, your, your followers, you know, cross pollinate them, cross collaborate and say, hi, my name is Milly, but I've got this organization. Do follow it. But you want to have two separate profiles because those two separate profiles are going to be serving two separate audiences um because people need to know where they're engaging with you on and using a personal profile has got very very um, very many many limitations than using a, a page a, a brand profile um, and don't neglect to optimize your profile so make sure that you've got the relevant keywords you've got the relevant profile picture and people will actually find you easier on linkedin you'll be surprised at how many people you aren't able to find on linkedin because they don't have the right keywords they don't have the about us page they haven't posted anything but they are on linkedin so you want to make sure that you're using the right the right messaging on linkedin the right copy and you've got your about your about us page um up to date and don't post irrelevant content on LinkedIn. This is a pet peeve of mine. Stick to the content that's relevant to your cause, your industry, and avoid content that, posting content that is unrelated to your organization. So let's say, for example, there's something that's happening. I don't know, maybe the, there's something that's happening on BBC News and you think it's important and you want to share it on your LinkedIn profile as a, an organization. You need to stop and ask yourself, does this align with my purpose on LinkedIn? Does it align with my organization, my mission, my values? Should I rather share this, con this, this information on my personal page as opposed to my LinkedIn page. So whenever you're about to post something, you need to be to be sure that you are posting it onto the right profile and it aligns with your with your company goals, your in your organization's mission and your organization's vision. And not just post anything on LinkedIn for the sake of having something to post. I found some organizations that are doing well on LinkedIn. Um, and I just wanted to share a couple of a couple of screenshots and a couple of reasons why these organizations are doing well on LinkedIn. And I hope that you can just pick up some of the things that they're doing well and see if you can alter them and, and, and tweak them for your own organization. This is not, I'm not nitpicking on anyone, but these are just organizations that are doing well and some that aren't doing well. And I hope that we can all just learn and take something from the organizations that are doing well. So the first organization I found that's doing well is Guanele. And as you can see, um, they've got a great cover image. They've got a great, um, the, they've got a great profile image and they've got a great banner, which even at a glance, you are able to see that their organization is about technology, it is about advocacy, it is about support. Um, the people that work at the organization um, have tagged themselves that they, they are part of this organization. You can see with the number of followers that this is a functional page, it is a healthy page. Um, the about us section is is compelling and it it has enough information. So this kind of LinkedIn page, um, even when you're doing a search for it, you are able, you're going to find it. And when you do find it, you're not going to be searching and looking and wanting and not knowing what it is that this organization is about. So we want to be as clear and as concise as as Guanelle when you are on LinkedIn. Um, people, excuse me. 
shouldn't have to wonder what your organization is about and what it is that you do because you have the information is there and you should give it to to your consumers um they also use the event functionality which is really amazing um to say you know they've got a pro bono event company coming on the on, on on the 18th of may and people can sign up and be part of this event so it's great it's a great use of the of, of the platform specific um um functionality of linkedin they post videos and even in the videos themselves they use hashtag and they copy they write properly um the content is great and it's compelling and it it, it speaks to the video because if they could have just posted the video on its own but then now when you, you have to go and watch the video to understand what the video is about but let's say you're running out of time and you quickly want to 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 scan through the copy but then you'll know that this this video is about timna who was murdered at the age of 13 and then you can click the video and watch it so it's a great use of um content of video of images and of platform specific tools and another organization that i found that's also doing well on linkedin the women's legal center again I mean, even the name itself is, is it's all about women. And it's great to just see that in the use of the cover image, they are showcasing women. And whether these are the women that work there or it's the woman, you know, it's an image that they found, it's a great way of showing um, of showing what the brand is about at first glance. They've also used the about us section. They've also included where they are. You can see their number of followers and you can you can visit their website. <laughs> Sonke Gender Justice as well, using video um, on their LinkedIn page, having an about us section that makes sense is also another great use of LinkedIn. Um, again, with them, again, the views of video and copy. So the combination of image plus copy equals success, video plus copy equals success. You have given the visual part of people something to look at. You have given the reader side of people something to read about, and no one is going to be confused about what this brand is about and what it is that they do. And then I found another organization that's not doing so well on LinkedIn. And again, this is not a, a, a witch hunt, but it's just a for you as an organization to just look at, at what you're doing on LinkedIn and how you can be better. And Emma Sisraini um, Foundation, um, first of all, I think just make sure that you're using sentence case um, on LinkedIn, make sure that you have your cover image um, on. I can see that the profile picture is there, but you need to have your cover image. You also need to have your About Us page, and you need to be sure about what services you are providing um, on LinkedIn, because at the on top there, it has got the hashtags that you are about GBV, you are about LGBTQI and HIV presentation, prevention, sorry, but at the bottom it says providing resume services, public speaking and career development, and that there's a disconnect between um, what you have said in the top part of the page and at the bottom part of the page. So if you are if you are creating a page on LinkedIn, you just want to make sure that it aligns with who you are. The copy that is there speaks to your values, speaks to who you are, and that there's no confusion about what, 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 what services um, you actually provide. And this is an ultimate guide to fundraising on LinkedIn. Um, virtual fundraising. So with the rise of remote work um, and social distancing, there's been a whole lot of virtual events that we've seen. Um, LinkedIn with with the including with the in, in, in with them including LinkedIn Live as a platform. So it's great for you to host your webinars, to have live interviews, and any other virtual events that can help you raise funds and awareness. And I think this is great because you don't need to look for a venue, you don't need to do catering, you don't need to worry about speakers coming or getting stuck in traffic. But if you're doing a virtual fundraiser and you're doing it via LinkedIn Live, then everybody's connected, provided everybody has got a solid connection, and you can run your events, you can run your webinars online and you can raise awareness and um, about your nonprofit organization. Influencer marketing, we've spoken a lot about it. You need to leverage influencers the best way that you can, whether it's influencers that you find or friends of the brand. So see who is in your arsenal. I've been mentioning this. Who is in your back pocket? Who did you go to school with that now has 100,000 followers? Tap into those people um, that have a large following um, and uh, just make sure that you find people whose values align with yours, whose mission align with yours and see how they can help you amplify your message. So influencers are really, really important. Um, <laughs> The right, the right influencer. 
social selling. Um, perhaps this is not something that you guys can do, but I mean, I think LinkedIn is a great platform that that is, that, that is all about building relationships with potential donors and supporters. So if you are providing valuable content, and engaging with people and you're sharing stories, so you're actually selling yourself online without having to pay for money for ads. Um, so this is something that you can, you can look into as an organization. How am I selling myself? What is my 30 second elevator pitch um, on LinkedIn? Um, can potential donors connect with me and when they do connect with me do they understand what it is that um that that i'm about and when they want to donate is it as easy as at the click of a button or do they need to jump through hoops data and analytics super 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 important um linkedin has their own inbuilt plat platform that showcases your analytics and data um and i think all nonprofits can use that can use this 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 um this this platform to track the success of their campaigns and measure their impact and you can measure things like engagement rates and click through rates and conversion rates and you can just see maybe what's the, where there's a drop off maybe people drop off before they they donate because maybe donation is the donation button is hidden or they can't see it so you can look at these things and optimize optimization is key on social media and optimization means that if you run a campaign or if you're running something and if you're running a campaign it's not working how will you optimize for it how will you make sure that you 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 look at the stats and the data and then you start doing things that actually work even as you guys work on your own um, campaigns for for tuesday look at the campaign that you're creating look at what the data is going to tell you and and see it, and and have a plan to say if by 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 week two this campaign does not reach fifty thousand followers we are going to optimize and this is how we optimize because sometimes you actually see that the next time around when you've optimized the campaign the next time around then you are going to start to reach more people so make sure that you optimize and use data and analytics to help you reach your your goals and the last one is corporate social responsibility. So I'm not quite sure about other countries, but here in South Africa, it's all these big companies have to spend one one percent of their one percent of their of their profits on CSI. And nonprofit organizations do form part of CSI. So you want to use LinkedIn as well to research these people. Who are the head honchos of CSI at Exaro, at Momentum, at Hollard, at, at, at Sunlam? Um, check out, check these people out on LinkedIn and see if they're prioritizing um uh, if they're prioritizing CSI or CSR and if your organization is on LinkedIn and you're doing it well, obviously when these ESD managers are looking for which organizations to partner with, they will see that your organization, the, your LinkedIn profile is, is spot on, your content is spot on, you're using the right videos, your about us section is cool. And then when they're looking for people that they can connect with, um, they'll see, okay, this organization shares our mission and our values, and then they'll be able to explore opportunities for collaborations and partnerships. So LinkedIn is really, really important. For me, it, as, a, as an NGO, it's one of the most important platforms that you can tap into because it has great, great potential. And then some tools that I found on LinkedIn, similar to Facebook and Twitter and TikTok, you can you can run LinkedIn fundraisers. Um, the fundraiser tool can allow you to directly raise money through LinkedIn, um, and you can track the progress of your campaign, and you can thank donors using the LinkedIn fundraiser tool. Um, you can set goals, you can invite other people and connections. So there's a whole lot of um, cross cross pollination that can happen on LinkedIn using the LinkedIn fundraiser. You can share it on other pages. You can share it on your personal page. So you want to actually look into LinkedIn fundraisers as a way to raise money. LinkedIn ads. I know that you know non nonprofits don't don't always have the money, um, the 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 budgets for LinkedIn ads. But when there is a budget, it's nice to give your page a boost so that you can reach more people. You can be targeted. Let's say you want to target donors that are in Canada that are between the ages of thirty five to sixty five, and you need a, 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 a however amount of donations into your account by a certain time. You can run a, a campaign on LinkedIn, and you can target those people and make sure that they see it. Because the more they see it on their newsfeed, the more it's top of mind. So you can use LinkedIn to promote your events, to increase awareness, and um, actually encourage donation using ads. And the last one is, is LinkedIn events. So, you know, I Squanele used it perfectly when, they, when they've got, they created an event. And now people, when they come onto the page, then they have, there's, there's a general interest already about 
um, the, 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 non, the non-profit organization and the event that's happening amongst followers and connections. Um, so you want to create events. Let's say you are trying to raise money for a case or you have a, you have a gala dinner that's happening whereby you're trying to raise funds. So create an event for that. And even if people can attend physically or they can attend virtually, create that event um, and track your RSVPs and engage with people even before and after the event. You want to have your pre-phase, you wanna have your during phase, you wanna have your after phase. And the, the events page can actually even help you send invitation. You can track RSVPs and you can engage with attendees on the platform. So before I go into the tools, I just wanted to check if you have any questions that you want to ask, does everything make sense? Um, does anyone have questions? I haven't been looking on the chat box. Are there any questions that you want to ask about LinkedIn before I go on to tools? Okay, if there are no questions, then I'm going to move over to social media management tools that you can use on LinkedIn. So when it comes to tools and link and LinkedIn, there's there's some terminology that you need to know, which is called social listening. Social listening. Um, can you please mute yourself? Social listening um is, is the is the process of analyzing you know the conversations and the trends that are happening, um not just around your brand but around your industry as a whole. And some of the tools that I'm going to show you today, I've been speaking about, but they actually allow you to even you can create keywords on nonprofits in South Africa, donation in South Africa, fundraising in South Africa in Malawi, and um, fundraising in Zimbabwe. So you can create you can create keywords that will help you listen to conversations that are happening. And if you see something happening in a certain area that you want to tap into and be part of, you can actually um, join that conversation via Twitter or via LinkedIn or via your Facebook platform. So when somebody speaks about social listening, this is when you create keywords, you create Google alerts about certain topics so that should those topics be trending, then you can actually um, be able to tap into those topics. Um, I mentioned before LinkedIn analytics. I think if you do have a LinkedIn page, you are aware that there's LinkedIn analytics and LinkedIn analytics provide uh, uh, great uh, yourself. Thank you. LinkedIn analytics provide great tools. They will show you your followers. They'll show you your content, your engagement. They even drill down to who the people following you are, how many execs are following you, how many students are following you, um, which sectors are people following you coming from. Um, so using LinkedIn analytics tools is a great way for you to just get a sense of who your community is so that when you are running campaigns or when you're starting and stopping campaigns, you know I'm talking to 50% of execs and 10% of students. Therefore, the content that I'm going to use on LinkedIn and make an example needs to cater to both to to both the this these the, um these these sectors of people or maybe I'm talking to managers in the mining sector that are likely to donate or I'm talking to people in the corporate sector or in marketing that are looking to to donate so the messaging that I use on LinkedIn needs to 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 factor those two the, these these two groups of people. I love the fact that LinkedIn shows you when there's a spike. So even as you are working on your campaigns for Tuesday. How are you, what analytic tools are you going to use? And if you see that when you're doing your campaign, there's been a spike and a spike means there's a positive spike. Many people came onto your page, they clicked on the link. How are you going to maintain that momentum? These are some of the things that you need to think about when you're working on your campaign so that you just you don't just create a campaign and leave it to chance. You need to know what analytics tools am I going to use? If I see a sudden spike and I have so many people coming onto my website, will my website break? Will I be able to handle the queries and the comments? And if I get negative comments, how will I deal with, that, with those kind of negative comments? So these are some of the things that you need to think about as you are working on your campaign for Tuesday. And then we have Hootsuite, um, which we have, I've been talking about this week. So I'll play this video in case some people know how to use Hootsuite and in case some people don't. Um, this is just a video, an overview of Hootsuite as a dashboard and how you can use it. Hey there, welcome to the Hootsuite dashboard. 
I'm here to give you a quick flyby of the features you'll use most. And I've recruited the best pilot in town for our tour. Here to give me a hand is the bird, the myth, the legend, Owly. The sidebar covers all of the features like composer, streams, publisher, inbox, and analytics. These buttons toggle the different functions in your dashboard, but before you can use them, you'll need to add your social networks. You can add new networks from your profile or from the streams tab anytime. Once you do, streams gives you a bird's eye view of your entire social world and you get to choose the highlight. Use it to monitor your feed, view and respond to mentions and review your scheduled posts. You can also use streams to curate content by following whatever trending hashtags and topics you're into. And to create your own content, use the composer. Here, I can create one post to share across multiple networks or multiple posts to share across one network, including Instagram stories and reels. The composer saves me hours in native apps and the functionality is just as flexible. Look, here's a post I want to put on Instagram and Twitter, and per network editing means I can tweak it, so I'm mentioning the right account on each one. The media library is stocked with royalty-free images and GIFs, or you can add your own, and Hootsuite will format it for each network. It even shows you the best time to publish based on what's worked for you in the past, so you can schedule your post when you know your audience will see it. Looks like this is the winning time. Now let's fly over to the planner to check out what else is on the schedule. Here's where you'll see your scheduled content across all of your networks and plan out future posts. I spot a gap here, so I'm going to just quickly drag and drop an existing post, but you can also create a new post right here. Change your calendar view or even filter by things like post status. It's also worth playing around with your planner settings to find the setup that works best for you. Okay, remember how I said Hootsuite saves me hours in apps? Here's one of the best features for interacting with your followers. Inbox shows you all of your private and public social messages in one place, like all of the messages. We're talking Instagram DMs, public comments, public story mentions, you name it. So here I see a customer who's been looking for attention, and I'm going to quickly assign it to my colleague in customer care to step in. You can even save replies and track the interaction history so we can prevent a firestorm. To keep track of any shifts in my numbers, I use analytics. The data is constantly changing based on your post and account performance. You can monitor the big numbers like audience growth and the small details like post engagement. All of the best time to publish data that I mentioned earlier is housed here, so I can check in on what's working best and adjust my strategy. And to prove my strategy is working, the report templates help me break down the data so my leaders can understand it. That's it for now. Thanks for your help, Ali. And if you ever need more help, there's easy access to the Hootsuite Help Center. And you can swoop over to Hootsuite Academy anytime to learn more. Cool. So those were some of the top functionalities of Hootsuite. And as you heard, you can go to your inbox on Hootsuite. You can check out, you can manage Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all in real time because you'll create feeds and each feed will have each platform. And you can pick if you want to use, check, if you're on Twitter, you want to check your ad mentions or if you want to track a hashtag. So Hootsuite is really great for those kind of things. And then I just found some tools on how to use Canva. Um, I will share the link at the on, in the chat group. I, I'm sure some of you have used Canva and it's very simple to use Canva. Um, if you actually have a Google account, you can just um, sign up by using your Google account and then it just picks up all your, your information um, using the Google account. And once you've signed up, obviously you use it. There's a template that you can create. So sometimes you're able to create a template from scratch or you can just check for templates. So there's templates for LinkedIn, for all the social media platforms. There's even templates for website, for invites, everything that you can you can you 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 can think of is available on Canva. Um, and all you do is customizing your designs, whether you need to add your logo or you want to add copy. Um, or you just want to, to, to use it as is, but the trick is to check 
that there's that free icon at the bottom because if it says free then you'll be able to download it but if it says premium then you need to pay for it so if you're on the free version of of canva always use the free images that are that are provided for you if you are not able to pay but if you want to pay then you can put your credit card details and use the premium version of canva <clears throat> and then the lovely thing i that's so amazing about canva is that you can just download your images from canva and they can download as pdfs they can download as jpegs um, and it's easy for you to actually go through the download process and then you can share your design um, sometimes you can share directly onto social media, media platforms from Canva, or you can just download images onto your computer and then you will share them on Canva. Um, someone asked if we could go through Twitch. Um, so Twitch is a relatively new platform that is all about gamification. And I think I spoke about gamification on Tuesday, that gamification is also another way, um, another tool for storytelling, especially for people that aren't into words or pictures, but they want to have um, gamified um, options of reading through things or seeing through stuff. Um, Twitch offers um, stuff that is music, um, talk shows. There's a whole lot of creative content that is on Twitch. So if you want to look into Twitch and see, is there a way that I can tell my story in a musical way, in a gamified way, in a talk show kind of way, or I can create content that is different? Um, you can look into Twitch um, to use it for that. Um, I think NGOs can use Twitch to connect to their supporters because they our supporters are changing and our followers are changing, and they're on, on lots and lots of different platforms. So you can just look at do I have a younger audience? Do I have a gamification or gamified audience that is following me? And are they on Twitch? And you can just get onto the platform and play around with it and see how well it works for your organization. Um, on Twitch as well, um, organizations can do fundraising. Um, they can host lives on Twitch, um, but obviously you'd need to you know, grow your follower base on that platform. And um, you can engage with your supporters in real time and you can encourage donations. You can also create content on Twitch and content that is different from the other content that you share on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Um, you can host live streams, you can interview experts in real time, and you can also showcase your work in like a show real type of way. Um, I think Twitch is great for community building. And this is really a big thing that we want to do on social media is that you want to build bonded communities. And I think it's great that there can be a dedicated channel where your, your viewers can engage with your organization and each other, you know, in a platform that is different from all the other platforms that we have. And if there are actually any partnership opportunities, you can partner with Twitch and any streamers or any creators that are on Twitch who share content that is similar to yours. Um, and you can reach new audiences and raise awareness about your cause. So Twitch is a, is a great platform. If you are looking into new platforms and new avenues to get new followers or new donors, you want to look into Twitch and see how you can use it. And then the exercise for today is just simple. Um, if you are on LinkedIn, we just want you to <clears throat> log into your LinkedIn account, but we can do this exercise later because we have a case study that is going to be shared today. So we can do the exercise after the case study. Nomti, are you ready with the case study? Yes, Chantal. Chantal has a case study, but we can do the exercise later. Hello. Hello, Chantal. Hi, Chantal. Please go ahead and share. Okay, do I just share my screen? Yes. Okay. Good day, everybody. It's lovely to be here. Are you struggling, Chantal? Um, I, I'm just clicking on it now because I wasn't a different, there was a different one. Can you guys see okay. my screen now? Coming up. It's just coming up.
Can you see it? No, it's taking quite a while. Maybe stop share and then just try and share again. Okay. Okay, try and share again. Okay, there you go. Okay, so you guys can it's see your home, my screen. It's your, it's your home page, correct? Yes, it's my own page. Like, okay, yeah, sure. it's got my okay. LinkedIn page. Um, okay. If you guys can see, like, I just want to be honest, we, um, we have just started last year with our um, LinkedIn page. And obviously, I've had my profile for quite some time. Um, and I've almost like been very fearful of LinkedIn because mostly um, you don't understand a lot of LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> Millie has shared quite a bit, which is a lot of information um, that I think it's so valuable for us um, to explore in, in that spaces. So um, the guidelines that we have received in terms of starting our own LinkedIn page from um, the marketing um, volunteer that, um, that we have that volunteers with our organization uh, from time to time, and she's got her own marketing company and also very much into social media. Her guidelines for us was that I would have to um, literally do it under my own page. So you will find that this is my own page, and then you will also find that new heritage is literally under my page. And the reason for that was that you don't um, do the page um, that it stands on its own. Um, and I'm not saying that is correct, but that was the guidelines that we were given that automatically your followers will just link up because they know you and your followers will automatically follow your page or you could get um, them to follow your page in a space where you can see, okay, this is what um, New Heritage Foundation does. Um, so what has happened, we started our page um, last year um, and we did no content on it. There was no pictures, there was no, no introduction on it, absolutely nothing. Um, and it was like literally just started the page and it was dormant for the longest of time um, until um, this year when we started doing postings. But what happened was we had um, just about 80 people that followed the page and they stayed um, from last year, November, I think we started our page. Um, and they stayed. And then um, once we started posting this year, we had new followers um, that started following our page and we had interactions and people that I didn't know that will leave a comment like um, um, Mikate Comedia's founder. Um, we've had her um, attention where she left a comment for us. Um, this is our, our, our logo. And then we have at the back one of our pictures um, that we are doing. And then we also now have 118 followers on the page and we're looking to grow it as well. Um, so I feel that um, what Millie has said was that is so true um, because we are so um, unfamiliar with um, LinkedIn and I'm not say unfamiliar to a point where we don't know anything, but to a point is what, what is going to work for our page and what is not going to work for our page is the mere fact that we want to engage in a space of that we know exactly how to manage our posts, what we're going to put, put there and maybe from Instagram, which we are fairly familiar with, we are we don't do um, post every um every day we would do once a week or once every two weeks and maybe we can slow it down maybe if millie has got some other advice do we do it once a week do we do it two um, um twice a week or every consecutive week i mean that we can also look at and i found that also the hashtags is people that started to um, um view our page which you will see the analytics um, searches for the last seven days we have seven unique visitors we have 10 new followers um, we have 320 post impressions. We have six custom button um, clicks um, because people start to engage in that format. And I think if we are more proactive, we could possibly have um, more people engaging and also more people following us and also more people um, wanting to know more about our organization. What the, the post that stood out also was the one that Roots did 
and they, um, because we engage with Roots to, um, through Quanele, we set it up and linked us with the Roots Foundation, and they posted a um, the the, the um, volunteers that um, that linked up with um, that we now have. We have an, a volunteer uh, Teo from France, and he also works on our social media and is also part of our um, outreaches um, until next week. Um, then he leaves um, back to France. Um, and so what has happened, we've, we've gained, um, um, we've, we've been receiving emails from various students from Yale University. Um, so um, they've engaged to wanting to do a research study in terms of the um, health faculty that they have. And we've got um, Kaylee Saylor, um, who sent us an email to say, can she not engage with us um, in a hybrid space? Um, she would like to um, work with our organization um, or be part of the programs we, we do in terms of creating structures because she's also in the sexual reproductive health space as a Yale University student, but it's in a faculty where she is um, um, a member of various um, health um, um, practitioners. Um, in that space. She's, she's known to South Africa, she's been here quite some time, and she would like to get involved with our organization. Um, and since then, we've had various conversations with her, um, and also um, um, scheduled meetings going ahead with um, various um, faculty members um, of Yale University, and possibly looking at them coming to our organization. Uh, Please mute yeah. yourself, guys. Mute. Yeah, so also, yeah, um, choosing our organization to be the organization they would want to um, um, volunteer at when they choose nominations for, um, for um, projects that they can do in around the world or around the globe, literally. So for us, it is finding our space. Um, there's also a new one that we have um, sent and um, linked up on the on these spaces, which is the um, LinkedIn um, nonprofit, um, which we have inquired about and we're waiting for a response from them to find out because our page is currently linked under my name, which currently my followers has followed um, on that page. Um, and I think it is resources for nonprofits organizations that they um, that we have sent um, um, uh, email to to find out how can we access this space because it says welcome to LinkedIn for nonprofits hub um, and um, it literally takes you um, um, to various spaces that you can start from scratch to maximize your prof um, your nonprofits existence. And obviously there is resources how to start um, if you don't know how to start. So it also has all of that. So um, we, I don't know much about this space, but I'm hoping to, um, to engage with one of the um, 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 people that could come back to us to find out should we do new heritage or can we link it up? That new heritage page will be linked up with the nonprofits in the LinkedIn um, spaces or community. Um, and then they give you guidelines as to how you can start from step one to step four. Um, and also these various resources that we can um, access in this hub. Um, we can find employees, we can find volunteers, we can find board members. Um, we can learn how to post um, if that is because I feel this is something that's new and I think it's definitely something we need to explore because there's a lot of professionals and there's a lot of corporate companies and a lot of CSI spaces and I do believe there's a lot of decision makers on LinkedIn so it's a very professional network so it's not like your Instagram so you must always be aware of what you post and obviously your profile how you present yourself on LinkedIn it also can also attract people and can also get people to stay away so you want to do it right and i think this platform is a platform we would like to join um, because we can get a lot of um, support in this space and i do believe uh, maybe also maybe from this space they also um, advertise the nonprofits in the space because sometimes you have various nonprofits that comes up and you don't your name is not on that list 
So maybe this is a space when people um, search for nonprofits to fundraise for or to support, maybe this will be the space where our names also pop up and people can also choose our organizations to donate. Um, and it's giving you various tools um, to do um, in the nonprofit space. So I like this and we've just inquired about it. Um, and so we're looking for our feedback, but those who don't have a LinkedIn profile, you're also most welcome to, to go onto this community and find out for yourselves. Can you, maybe you should also inquire if you don't have a, a LinkedIn profile, so you don't have any followers, maybe you can separate the two and just start joining this community from scratch. And I feel that um, if they say it is a community, there could be a lot of other organizations that could also follow partner for collaborations, join campaigns, and, and that you can we can find our tribes within communities like these that could also um, amplify the work that we are doing um, in the spaces. So we are still growing our page. We are inquiring, we are looking, we are posting. And I must say it's a space that I think um, um, we should spend more time on because um, the other ones is just for socials, but here we can find great stakeholders um, and um, very uh, professional people that can not just fundraise or give us funding, but also join our boards and take us into other rooms um, and take us on other platforms that is going to be relevant for our spaces. So it's definitely a tool I think we should all have um, and actually focus on more. That is just from me, ladies and gentlemen. I am not a professional in this space, but I would like to learn as all of you are learning. And I would like to thank Meliswa for being so open and broad in the prospects of all of the above. So maybe if you've got more ideas on, or if you know of more of this particular community, Meliswa, and if you can, if you have more um, insight to it, we would like to know how we can link the two pages because currently mine is under my own profile, which Ooh. benefits from my, um, and I can link the two. So when I post, I can automatically post it on my personal profile as well when I do a post in my um, organizational profile. Wow. Um, this is it's so amazing. I am literally like blown away. I'm sure you didn't see my my gasp when you said you created a page and you didn't post for a year. <laughs> I was no, like, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, we did. We didn't post. I was so scared to post even. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is why I've been saying, I don't know if you've been part of the other trainings, I've been saying that the, the best thing to do is to bank your content. So create content in a batch and bank it so that you don't have the pressure of having to create content on the daily and feed the beast. You know, LinkedIn yes. is a sleeping giant. You, you've seen this and you and it grows so quickly and so organically because it's a captive audience. People know what they're coming onto LinkedIn for. And I love how you said you've got decision makers on LinkedIn. We have people that can put you in rooms that you're not, you are not part of. We have people that can get you into boards. So those yes. people, when they see an organization that they, that they, 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 they connect with on LinkedIn, they are going to start following you. So I, you already have the right mindset of LinkedIn and what it is and what it can it can do for your brand. Um, and I think you even having students from Yale coming coming to your page and saying, how can we volunteer? What can we do? Shows you the potential that your organization has on this platform. So I think that you should just, when when you get the, um, the presentation from, from me um, via Nomti, have a look at some of the tips and the tricks even as you're writing the content just look at what what's trending what hashtags can i can i can i can i um tap into what organizations can i tag how can i be more yes. effective on linkedin and just don't post a lot so the three three posts a week that are solid is a great is a great way of starting and you can create content in weekly batches or, or bi-weekly batches and you can just keep your content there so that you're not pressured as to I'm going to post every day and I need something to say every day yes so I'm I, I for for now it's okay that um the LinkedIn the, the the organization's profile is under yours because LinkedIn is very finicky about so you can't just create a fake profile and create an organization profile they want to see that you as a person has a LinkedIn profile first and that is yes. active and that you actually exist and you are not a bot. And that's why yes. 
hardly see the scamming things that you see on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram because LinkedIn is very specific about the people that are there. And that's why they want a person's profile to be linked to an organization's profile. So I think for now, keep the two as they are, but obviously um, post more on the organization's profile so that you can grow that. And on your profile, you can just repost and say, you know, whatever it is that you had spoken about that day and you can share it on your own personal profile. Um, the fundraising tool, do reach out to the people at LinkedIn. They are going to connect with you um, and they will they will show you or tell you how to go about um, with accessing that LinkedIn for fundraiser because the fund, all the donation, the donation techniques and the events and the fundraiser things are all sitting on that page. So you, oh, okay. yeah, you're already on the right track by actually being able to access that page. You just need now need somebody that's going to help you navigate that space properly. Um, because again, they, they they might even give you some 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 funds of, of how to do ads like Google yes. grants. I think I think LinkedIn is also going to start playing in the grant space where if you're an NGO, you get favorable you know favorable um, um, advertising terms. So this is a space that they want to go into. But I mean, I think for me, in in closing, your your page is on the right track. You need to post more. And by you seeing that, even after having not posted for a year, when you came back, there was a captive audience. It means there's something that you're doing right. Wow. The, Thank you so much. For that. Yeah. So you can only improve from here. Um, and I wish you all the best. I actually think that you've got a you've got a great you can you can build some you can build more. Um, the last brand that I managed before I joined Flow actually went up to 200,000 followers and we wow. were not even using ads a lot. We were just feeding LinkedIn information. So we were posting, posting, using polls, using videos, reposting, showcasing events, and we we're using all the organic tools that LinkedIn has. And I, I kid you not, every week we'll get up to a thousand new followers. So the more you post, the more you use. And when, when you don't have content, use a poll. Ask people that yes. question. Where are you engaging with us from? What topics would you like us to cover? What are your thoughts on the bill that has been passed or whatever? You know, some things that, yes. that are pertain to you so if you use polls use videos you you repost stuff and share from other organizations so if there's an okay unicef shares something or another organization that you love and you're like we love this article by whoever whoever these are some yeah. of the events that we align with and then it shows you like okay this this organization in the small part of the world is acknowledging another big organization in the same space and people will start to to to, to pay attention and take notice of you so yeah, that's that's all for me. I think it's it's amazing. I don't know if we're in round to give more feedback. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Thank you, uh, my Colleen and Noam T and everybody else for giving me the platform. Like I say, I'm not so much tuned in, but I'm very, very interested. And yeah, from we'll do more. We will have next year when I present again, I'll have 200,000 followers. <laughs> 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 Listen, a girl can dream, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Nomti. Nomti and Colleen, are you still there? Yeah, I'm done from my side. The only thing that I have left was for the exercise, which is just taking some time, even if it's 10 minutes to follow each other on LinkedIn, find each other's organizations, and just do tell me how hard it is to find each other on LinkedIn. So you you know you know the organizations that are here, you know the people that are here. Um, check, out their, check out their LinkedIn profiles and follow them. You can also follow each other. You can follow me. You can put your names in the chat box. Um, I'll, follow, I'll follow people as well. So let's just do this until three. And I think Nomti and Colleen will come back and wrap up for today is that cool yes so this is a yeah this is a follower follower to follower session until three o'clock
I also wanted to mention that when you are actually asking to follow someone, so if you go on LinkedIn and say, I want to follow Nomtandazo, it, it gives you an option to send a personalized message. And that is such a nice touch from an organization perspective to say, um, we want to follow Nomtandazo. We are an organization based in Malawi, and these are our focus areas, and we want to follow you for so and so case. So don't just go and follow people, but you can actually introduce yourself, even if it's a two line introduction, so that people know what your organization is about and they're not seeing a rogue. Um, a rogue um, invite from an organization they don't know. So it's it's always best to just be personal and 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 say, my name is Miliswa Sotrele. I manage flow communications. My organization is called da 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 da. And I'd love to follow you for for either for collaborations or for partnerships or to just learn from you. So do add a personalized message um, to whoever you want to connect with. And what you want to do as well, you don't want to follow people, you want to connect with them. So there's an option where you can click either follow or connect, but click on connect instead of just following people. I hope that's making sense. I was going through um, through the gender links LinkedIn, and I saw that we have six hundred and um, six hundred and forty six followers. I think so. Mili, is there is there a difference between the followers and the connections? I I, so, I just uh, maybe elaborate a little bit for me on that one. So on a page, it would be followers. On a person's on a person's page on a on on a pay, on a brand or organization's page, it would be followers. But on my person on you, Nomti, your personal page, it would be connections. That's connections. what they called. But it's still oh. the same. Just that they use different um different terminologies. But six forty six is good. Um, and I think if you take some of the tips from here and you start using them, you you could you could actually get to 1000 by the end of the year, because LinkedIn is not a hard, it's not a hard platform to grow in, especially if you're using the right content. So using the right yeah. content, you're posting timely, you're being engaging, and you are sharing from other brand pages. So you, there, there is huge, huge potential for growth on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think uh, next week I must just keep man uh, Monday or Tuesday and just, I mean, probably Monday and just look at my social media pages <laughs> and start <laughs> building them. You can, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot that you can do on LinkedIn. You can build, um, you can connect with people. And I, I love how the new thing that they're doing now is just like prioritizing um content that is viral. So if you come into the news feed and someone has shared five top tips for NGOs wanting to fundraise, that content will keep showing up on people's news feeds across the board. So they are prioritizing content and they want um, people to post more content. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a great case study, Chantel. It was really, really lovely. Um, what's the name of your foundation, Chantel? I want to follow you guys as well. Uh, we are New Heritage Foundation. New Heritage Foundation. I actually think I came across you when I was doing some research. Okay. Uh, I was, <laughs> if you were, <laughs> if you were the ones I saw on the list, so I will follow you. <laughs> I don't want to follow. I was thinking more. maybe I was the one that you would think that wasn't in the right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw it when I was doing some research and I just, I wasn't sure because there was one that was in Ireland and I'm like, mm, I don't want to follow. Okay, I'm your 120th follower. Okay, thank you so much. There you go. Follow. Yeah, no, it's a great page. Thank you so much. Uh, also, what I didn't speak about, I don't know though, Chantal, when it actually kicks in. There's also a live page on LinkedIn, but I think it comes through after a certain number of followers. So the live page collates all the content that is shared by people who work at your foundation. So if you, if okay. I work at your foundation and I've said Millie works at your foundation, um, it will it can it can show up in the in the in Insta LinkedIn live page, but also 
you can also create a life page yourself um okay. where in cases it, like your mission your vision your just a couple of things about your organization and i'll share i'll share the netflix one because that's where i saw it netflix has a very great life page and i think okay. after I have followers you should be able to get it um so yeah i'll share a link on the chat Yes, I think if everybody can just put can in ask, the chat the LinkedIn profile, so that you just follow. Yeah. Leo, can I ask a question, please? Yes, you Millie? may. Yes, yes I'm, I'm asking. Because, yeah, I'm just. I've, I've just went to my LinkedIn um, profile and I realized that I've got two personal um, LinkedIn. I want to delete the other one because it's outdated. So how how do I go about and do that? It's personal. I it's then I can. Yeah. You can go to, you see where there's a, there should be a little icon with your face on it, on LinkedIn. Um, I think if you go yeah. to the bottom and maybe do account settings, you should be able to see where you can delete the page. I've never had to delete a LinkedIn page, but I think it comes up under that, under that section. Let me just look at mine and see. I'm there. You know where it says me? Because it says I want to... Yeah, Are I'm on there. there. I'm in there. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, it's, it's, let, me, it's, let me pull up my screen. Forever. Hang on. Uh, share. Can you see my screen? No, I, because I'm on my LinkedIn page. Yeah, okay, so let me. Yeah, there's something called close account at yeah, the bottom. I'm, I'm, you see, I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. yeah. Okay. So you can yeah. Click on it. Yeah. Let click on that. Yeah. Okay. Let me check if I, uh, I got it. Yeah. Correctly. I don't want to. I don't want to click and close my own account. I've had that account for many, many years. No, it's done. So I'm it's gonna done. check this other one. And yeah. Okay. They okay, even nice. say sorry. We to see you, you go. Let me just continue. That was. Hey, Millie. I also have an issue here. Yeah. I'm Rebecca, Women in Communities Zimbabwe. When I yeah. opened the LinkedIn account, we I actually used my personal details at first, yeah. and then in later on incorporated the the organization details. And now I'm not sure how to separate myself from the organization, but I've had a lot of followers as well. But I still think maybe I'm not doing the organization justice by putting yeah. myself first. If you can check on the our LinkedIn page, it actually okay. says Rebecca Chirenga first, and then women in communities later. Hey, please put the name on the on the chat so that I can check it out. All right, let me put it in. Yeah. So, ma'am Rebecca, are you using the are you using your personal profile as the organization profile? <laughs> Apparently, I, okay. Okay, maybe see if you can rename the page. I don't know if LinkedIn is gonna allow you. So, where I showed where I showed um. I don't know who I was talking to just now. If you go to under me and under settings, see if it allows you to rename the page. And then once you've oh. renamed the page, the, once you've renamed the page, then you're gonna use the your organization's uh, logo and then change the cover image. Maybe that's an easier thing to do. That's the best way I can do it. Yeah. Eh? So that you separate you from the organization. Because then, exactly. yeah, it makes sense. It does. All right, I'll do that. Thanks. Just follow me all the same. <laughs> I'll follow you just now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Nomti, I am Thanks, done with really. you. It's a pleasure. Nomti, I'm done with, with my section, so it's over to you. 
thank you so much, Millie. Um, just a quick announcement. Please remember that I will be opening the breakout rooms for you to do any additional work that you'd like to do today. I will keep it open until four o'clock. Um, and then um, on Monday from one o'clock, I've sent you a calendar invitation. From one o'clock, we will also have the breakout rooms open so that you can go into them and um, have your discussion and continue to collaborate and uh, do your presentations. And then on Tuesday, we'll also meet for when you need to present uh, between one and half past three. You will get a slot to present for 10 minutes. And as you know, the price is big. Um, and we are really looking forward to your campaigns. And Mili, thank you for facilitating for us this week. We really enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Cool. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you so I much. Have, I have now opened all the breakout rooms. I don't know which one. Do, do you want me to go to any? I can go to all the breakout rooms in case I've got questions, and then I'll log out at half past three. Okay, sure. Okay, I'll do that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, all the rooms are open. People can just go to their respective rooms. Oui, je peux y aller. Je peux aller dans les travaux des groupes. Nomti, will it showcase in the on screen that there's a group? Uh, because yeah. I don't have oui, a group. Oui, oui, de la reproduction. Okay, so um, if you go to the bottom of your screen, Chantal, yes. you know where there's okay. the reaction button and every all those buttons. You should see yeah. one that says that says breakout rooms. D'accord. There's no there's no button that's saying outbreak rooms. There's no yeah. button. Sorry. There's no button. Um. Please, can you share your screen? Hello. Uh, go to the way it says more on your screen. Okay. And then when you click on that, you will see there's record record on this computer, captions, and join breakout room. Then you oh, join okay. from yes. there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Linus, you are sharing with everybody. You are not in your breakout room yet. Linus? If you can't see the button, look for where it says more, and then you should see the space that says breakouts, and then choose your breakout room. Linus, okay, I was gonna say you're sharing your screen with us. Lebo, Juliet, Mantopa Institute. Sorry, sorry, we have, we should have two um groups for the SRHL. So there should be one for the comprehensive. There's, so I um, we should so have the, two three. One is um comprehensive sexual education and then the other one is teenage pregnancy, right? No, the other is is uh wait. Um, it's advocacy. Advocacy, yes. Um okay, let me just rename their group. Can they go to can they go just please announce in your group if they polile you are in the okay. adolescent you are in the adolescent SRHR group ne? Yeah yeah but for, okay. for not for advocacy I'm on comprehensive Okay 
please ask the advocacy people to to join the teenage pregnancy room. I, I'll okay. just rename. I'm trying to rename it. All right. Okay. Chantal.
Nomti. Nomti. 